Hello again, everyone. This is uh, Alderman Dave Tenza. Uh, I am here today doing uh, a, a number of segments with candidates, uh, local candidates who are running in the state elections uh, this fall uh, in both the primary and general election. Uh, we're fortunate today to be joined by Jordan Thompson, who is running for state representative in Ward 2 here in Nashua. Jordan, thank you for uh, being here with us today, taking time out of your, your busy campaign and schedule. Um, if you could just tell folks a little bit about yourself uh, and why you want to run for state representative. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Jordan Thompson, and I'm running for state representative in Ward 2 in Nashua. Um, to tell you a little bit about myself, I'm a Nashua native. I was born here. Um, I left briefly, and then I came back um, at the age of 11, and I've been here ever since. Um, I grew up in the foster care system here, and I aged out at age 18. Um, at age 18, I became more involved in uh, Democratic Party politics, um, first getting uh, my start on the Clinton campaign at age 16, um, and now I'm 19, running for office. I'm running for state representative because I have a bold progressive vision for the working class families of New Hampshire. Um, I am a strong believer that here in New Hampshire, you should be able to get ahead and stay ahead if you work hard enough. Um, and I think what we're seeing here today is New Hampshire families are working hard, but they're not getting ahead and they're not staying ahead. Um, I believe that there are many barriers in place that are preventing them from getting ahead. And my campaign at its very core is about breaking down those barriers. Great. Um, and so you, um, you run previously, you ran uh, last year, just in, in Ward 2. Yeah, I, run, I ran for moderator in Ward 2. Okay, and that's a, a lot of people don't know what, what moderator does. Um, but you've been um, active, like you said, since you were 16 years mm -hmm. old. Let me just ask you, wh what do you think, wh where did that activism come from? Well, to be honest, it came from my grandmother. Um, she has just been a really huge source of inspiration to me. Um, she's been very active in the Democratic Party for decades now. Um, and she is currently a um, school board member, Gloria Timmons. Um, but she really introduced me to the political scene um, ever since I was, I was very little. Um, bringing me to campaign events and bringing me to meet presidential candidates and so she was really kind of my my uh, guiding light in that sense and that's really where i got my start in politics yeah and she's she's uh she's an important your, your grandmother's an important person mm -hmm. um for the for the community in so many ways not just on the school board but she's, she's involved yep. and um you're you're clearly have have taken up that uh that same uh, mindset that, yes. that she has with a lot of the different things you've done. Right, she's uh, a the community. yeah president of the uh, the NAACP here in uh, the Greater Nashua NAACP, and she is on the NCC RJ board as well. So she's a very accomplished woman, and I look up to her greatly. Yeah, and she was just on the front page of the paper, uh, handing out school supplies. Right, uh, right. <laughs> handing out schools. She's she's all over the place. Right. Um, and so yeah, I mean she's a a model of of activism and just mm. community. Um, engagement so um, you know if you follow in her footsteps you'll we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll be better off as a community for it I believe so um, and you've already started following in her footsteps and you have your own um, a agenda in, in voice I think um, so tell us what what are the um, some of the most important issues to you mm -hmm. as you start uh, I in this campaign mm -hmm. well when I talk about the need to break down some of these societal barriers that in place there are so many of them so I have a, a pretty lengthy <laughs> legislative agenda but we're gonna pick three for time's sake um, so <laughs> so today we're gonna talk about voting rights um, raising the minimum wage and foster care reform, okay. um, all things that are very important to me and uh, I think are, are going to be really good discussions. So you said raising the minimum wage mm -hmm. explains for folks if they don't know, what, what's the minimum wage right now here now in New Hampshire yeah. and why do you think it needs to be the raised? The current minimum wage is seven twenty-five an hour. Um, which and is the federal minimum wage. Which is the federal minimum wage. Um, and that hasn't been raised in almost 10 years, so maybe a little bit over that. Um, it's it's a death wage. It's simply not a living wage. I don't know anyone who has ever been able to, um, maybe years ago, but in 2018, it is literally impossible uh, to work you know, full time on minimum wage and still make enough to provide for you and your family. Um, and that's a travesty. We have to raise the minimum wage. That has to be one of our, our top legislative priorities in this next session. Um, and so I support a minimum wage of $15 an hour. I believe that's a living wage. And of course, we can adjust that uh, in the future um, 
to accommodate living, um, the cost of living. But I think it's very important that we have that um, on the books. That's mm -hmm. extremely important because the current, I, I've actually worked <laughs> um, for a couple of years now, but I've tried to live on 725 an hour and it's not possible. Mm -hmm. um, it's simply not possible. You know, and, the, and part of the problem with the federal minimum wage mm -hmm. is that, not just that it's low, but you know, it doesn't take into account that the the cost of living here in the Northeast is right. so much more expensive. Right. Or, um, so someone who's living in a lower cost of living, it's probably still tough to get by on the 725. Absolutely, and many of these seven dollar and 25 um, cents jobs don't provide any kind of benefits either. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have uh, the paid family and medical leave that we need. Um, we don't have paid sick days. We don't have those concrete things that are really important um, to ensure that a worker can make it to work. Mm -hmm. um, and so those are all very important to me. Um, but it also has to do with competition. You know, you have states like Vermont, uh, Maine, and Massachusetts that we are all bordered by that are raising their minimum wage to um, living wages. You know, it's, I believe it's $12 in Massachusetts. I mean, when we are actively looking for ways to retain young people and workers of all age and backgrounds, we cannot continue to um, have this, this standard of the absolute bare minimum. And it's just like, you know, we talk about a New Hampshire advantage with uh, a lack of income tax, mm -hmm. a lack of sales tax. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, a, it's almost a New Hampshire disadvantage having only the, the federal minimum wage in place. Absolutely. Um, because, because workers will, you know, easily go over the border e even to, um, you know, make time and a half on Sundays and make sense to get a job in Massachusetts right. rather than up right. here in New Hampshire. Um, you also talked about voting rights as, mm -hmm. as one of your, your three priorities you wanted to talk about today. Mm -hmm. Um, what are your concerns with uh, how things are going now in Concord? What do you think you'd be able to um, do to, to improve conditions? Yeah, um, I think at the very core, my biggest concern is that many people don't believe their votes matter. Um, and I think the Republican Party has done, one of the very few things that they've done a good job at is making sure that people um, have doubts about the um, legitimacy of our elections. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that we have to tackle with HB 1264, the Republican Party actively trying to suppress the uh, votes of college students in New Hampshire. Um, I think that's a travesty. We need to be making it easier, not harder, for people to vote in this state. Um, I'm a big supporter of immediately repealing that <laughs> once this uh, legislation kicks in, um, this, legislati this legislative session kicks in. Um, not only that, but I believe we need to go farther than that. I think that we need automatic voter registration in this state. Um, we need to have a, sy a system in place to make sure that people um, can be brought into the political landscape in a way that they otherwise wouldn't be. Mm -hmm. um, I think automatic voter registration has worked in other states before. I, I think the figure is about 12 states and Washington DC currently have it implemented and there are 32 states in total that are working towards um, proposing it. And so how, how does that work? I'm not familiar with that. Yeah. So um, improved, strengthened yeah. in the state. Uh, so to give you a little bit of background, I uh, grew up in the foster care system here in New Hampshire. Um, I entered it when I was 12 years old and I aged out at 18. Um, foster youth here in New Hampshire have a very um, difficult journey. You know, a lot of them don't have um, family. A lot of them don't have the resources to succeed out by themselves in adulthood. And so that's very important that we address that. But you, I was just actually reading this article on the way here. Um, you see the Child Protective Agency here in New Hampshire fail on seven points um, in this. It's, it's honestly amazing um, that we have these systems in place that are just not working at all. Um, and I think a, a really big issue with DCYF in particular is that you have these workers who have huge caseloads. Um, I think that we need to limit the caseloads to 12 per worker. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we need to completely fund DCYF. Um, we need to make sure that DCYF workers are following up with uh, kids and in a way that they can actually do. I mean, when you have my DCYF worker had 60 cases. Mm -hmm. um, and so she wasn't always able to follow up with me in a reasonable amount of time because she's one person. Um, and so we need to fund their efforts, but we also ma need to make sure that you know they have the staffing that they need. Um, and so 
we need a complete overhaul of the child welfare system here in New Hampshire. And I am more than happy to be on the front lines of that in the State House. Yeah, and, I mean, I think you make some great points. I mean, I think that um, a lot of times people want to make this about government workers mm -hmm. and not, not doing the job they're right. supposed to do. But, um, you know, I, I have some interaction with DCUF through, through my uh, work in the court system. Mm -hmm. um, they, they are overburdened. Mm -hmm. um, I think a, a lot of the social workers who are working for them want to, to do the right thing and, and um, you know, do the best for the, the, the clients that they're serving, both mm -hmm. families and, and children. Um, but it's just not within the time frames that they have and within um, the caseload that they have, just not possible mm -hmm. for them to do yeah. everything they'd like to do. Right. Um, so, you know, first of all, thank you for, for speaking out uh, about this and, um, you know, making an issue mm -hmm. of, of your campaign because it's a, it's a huge, um, it's a huge deal for the state and, Fortunately, there have been some high-profile uh, cases recently, mm -hmm, uh, which have called called mm -hmm. uh, attention to it. But um, so, thank you for for that. The last thing I, I want to ask you about is um, give us your thoughts just on uh, young people uh, serving. Uh, <laughs> you know, retaining young people is so important mm -hmm. to to New Hampshire for a lot of right. reasons. Um, you're probably one of the youngest candidates uh, in the city. The youngest in the city. The youngest in the city mm -hmm. and probably one of the youngest in the state. Mm -hmm. So um, why is it important that, that young people uh, are, are involved? Mm -hmm. And um, do you feel that it's an advantage for you being so young or a disadvantage? I have mixed feelings about it. Mm -hmm. um, it's not something that I can necessarily control. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important that young people have someone in the state house representing their interest. Um, as we all know, we have the oldest legislature in the country. Um, the average age is of our legislator is 66 years old. Mm -hmm. um, and so a 66 year old cannot necessarily, you know, understand or even um, relate to some of the issues that young people are going through right now. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's very important that we are also advocating for policies that keep young people here, uh, making sure that we have commuter rail, making sure that we have a living wage, um, doing everything that we can in the form of Medicaid expansion, as well as um, you know what I was talking about with voting rights earlier and making sure that everyone's voice is, is truly being heard. Um, but I think it's, it's also important for young people to run for office because young people in this state, as well as every state in this country, deserve to have people who look like them, people who talk like them, um, and people who are going to really advocate for the issues that they care about. Um, and I you know, get this all the time. I, I see people who I went to high school with, and they're like, wow, like, I'm, I'm so glad that you're running for state representative. And then like, you know, what does the state representative do? Um, and so there's the education piece as well that's very important. But it, it's, it's definitely, um, it's been an interesting experience. And there are always going to be people, going to be people who try to discredit me because of my age. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a strength. I think we need a new energy um, in this party. I think we need a new energy for New Hampshire. Um, I think that with the wisdom of our elders and the energy of our newcomers, we can truly um, you know, move New Hampshire forward. Um, so we have about a minute left here. If mm -hmm. people would like to get in touch with you, ask you more about your, yourself or your campaign, mm -hmm. uh, how are they able to do that? Yeah, so we have a website, uh, jordan4nh.com. That's F-O-R-N-H.com. Uh, we also have a Facebook page, uh, Jordan Thompson for State Representative. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on all the social media platforms. So it's, I'm a very easy guy to get into contact with. Um, but I, I welcome all you know communication, whether you're a Republican, a Democrat, an Independent, Libertarian, whatever your political affiliation is. I may not agree with you on every issue, but I definitely value your opinion. So that, that's something that we need more in politics. <laughs> Great. Well, Jordan, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank uh, you for having we'll, me. We'll remind everybody the uh, election is, the primary election is September 11th. Is Tuesday, September 11th. Mm -hmm. Polls are open from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. So mm -hmm. um, please get out and vote. Jordan, thank you so much. Thank you.